data management plans, which are also called DMPs, are formal documents that describe the data produced during a research project and outline data management strategies that will be implemented during and after the active phase of the research project. Most funding agencies now require grantees to prepare data management plans as a part of the grant proposal. Even when a data management plan is not required, it can also be useful to your own project. After this tutorial, you'll learn what should be covered in a data management plan. You'll also be aware of tools and resources for creating data management plans. Although the specific content of DMPs varies depending on funding agencies' requirements, DMPs still share five key elements. These five key elements are listed into these five questions. What data will you create? There are several things you may consider. How big will your data be? What are the file formats for the data? Do you use proprietary formats or common file formats? What is the source of your data? If you use other researchers' data in your research, make sure that you have enough information about the data so that you can refer back to it later. Who owns the data? The university owns primary results generated from our research, development, and related activities conducted under its jurisdiction. How will you document your data? The classic way of documenting your data is to create a readme file. In the readme file, you should describe how the files in the datasets relate to each other. What metadata standards will you use? Metadata is defined as structured information that describes, explains, and locates the data. Many funding agencies prefer you to use sphere-specific metadata standards. Will you use supporting documentation? Your lab notebooks, methodology reports, questionnaires, and software syntax may contain useful information to interpret your data. What tools do you need for documentation? Maybe you are using electronic lab notebooks. How will you organize your data? You may need to create a folder structure to organize your data in a logic way. Will you use any file naming conventions? File naming conventions can help you distinguish data files from each other. How will you store your data and keep it secure? Where will you store your data? It's highly recommended that you store your data on your institutional network drive because they are secure and backed up. How often will you back up your data? If you use a network drive provided by the university, IT professionals will back up your data regularly. There may be an additional cost for data storage. Some founders, such as NSF, allow grantees to request funds for the cost associated with publications and data. What well, policies apply to your sensitive data? If your research is associated with human subjects, you need to be aware of FERPA, HIPAA, or IRB and follow their regulations and guidelines. What well, security measures will you take? It's highly recommended that you store your data with password-protected access. Sensitive data should be either kept on a computer which is not networked or encrypted. How will you manage your data after completion of the project? How long will you keep your data? The university's operations menu suggests researchers keep research data and records for a period of at least five years but specific contractual or regulatory obligations may supersede this policy. How will you prepare the data for long-term archiving and preservation? There are several things for consideration. Do you need to migrate your data to new storage media over time to protect the integrity of the data? Do you need to migrate your data to current formats if the old formats become obsolete? Also, think about if there's an additional cost for data preservation. What data will be shared? Many funding agencies require researchers to open data by default. If you cannot share your data or can 
only share a portion of your data. You have to explain why. A useful strategy for handling sensitive data is anonymization. When we are you share the data, data access would normally be delayed until after all results and findings from the data have been published. An embargo period means a specific period of time to restrict access to the data. An embargo period varies from 6 months to 2 years. Where will you share the data? It's highly recommended that you use existing data repositories to share the data. A data repository is a place where data can be deposited, archived, and discovered by yourself and other researchers. How will the data be prepared for sharing? You may need to indicate who will be responsible for making the data available and who will be the contact people for questions about the data. Data sharing may also cost an additional cost. DMP Tour is a step-by-step -step wizard to create data management plans to comply with funding agencies' requirements. Research Data Services Library Guide is also a good place to look for more resources. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.